your uh, PhD program. Okay. So one such is what we call as the research. Okay. So I would like to hear from you what exactly you have understood by the term research. Any of you? So rather than me speaking much, okay, I give you more opportunity for you to speak a lot. Okay. So, so that I come to know what exactly you have understood and if, suppose if you understood in a wrong way, I am here to correct you based on the knowledge I have gained in the last two decades or so. Yeah, what is that you understood by the term research and why do we do research? What is the purpose and what is the necessity of doing research? So, for example, say, say I have specs with B, right? Okay. So, what I do is in the house, we keep it somewhere there. Okay, and we are used to this. Yellow it put the way, look the safe place a little TV, and the safe again the term Kai Patra Sikodilla. Alva. So, do we call it as research? Because we are searching for it again, over and again. Okay, so do we call it as research? No. So, then what is that we mean by research? So as I told you, we have left a thing, okay, say a key bunch in a safe place, okay, and we are searching for it from day, from the morning till evening, and we keep on blaming son, daughter, wife, if we have wives, okay, wives, wife, ichthyology, what is it? Ichthyology and herpetology, okay. So people who come from science background may know what do you mean by ichthyology? Past? No, madam, that's microbiology. Okay, so ichthyology is a study of fishes, okay, and uh, herpetology, study of amphibians and reptiles, so put together we call it as herpetology, okay. So that means to say, this is the journal, so wherein people publish research findings which have been done as far as the fishes is concerned, the amphibians is concerned, or say the reptiles are concerned. So what exactly they have done is, they have reported B chromosomes in these amphibians, okay. So this is a legless amphibian, okay. So these are the different people, so who have published the work, okay. So here is, uh, uh, for example, say, okay, so there is Naranapa Govind Raju, so who is head department of biotechnology from KSOU, and there is uh, Robert Kenneth Brown, okay, he's from Belize, okay. Professor uh, Govind Ayavantachalaya, so he's a professor from Department of Zoology, Bangalore University, okay. So these are the different people, so who have done the work, okay. So if you could ask me, so what is the necessity to put the name of Robert Kenneth Brown, okay. So who is who is not from India, but as far as the work is concerned, the work is done from India on Indian amphibians, okay. And for again, and this is where your review of literature comes into picture, okay. So before, so you design a problem. First and foremost thing, you should know whether that problem really exists either say in arts, science, commerce or not, okay. So for that, so the thing is, what is that you have to have is, so you have to have a thorough knowledge about the literature which is already available, okay. So where do we get the literature? So we do get the literature in general like this, okay. One such is the ichthyology and herpetology. Suppose if you go back before 2021, okay, you go to library, you search in the library, okay, anywhere throughout the globe, you don't find so anywhere where there are reports of B chromosomes in Sicilians. I mean to say, so this is the first paper which talks or which reports about the presence of B chromosomes in Sicilians for the first time. And this becomes the literature, I mean to say, the available literature for the people who will be doing research after 2021. So before 2021, this information is not available. So that is why it is titled as first report of B chromosomes. And this is the paper which reports B chromosomes for the first time in the whole world. So Govinda Ventachalaya, he is the one so who gave the problem. Okay. And so Govinda Pa Venu, so who is myself? Okay. And Narayanapa, Govind Raju, okay, Albert Rajendran. So, Sompalem, Ramakrishna, so all these people, so they did the experiment in the laboratory. So, some of them, they went to the field, they collected the specimen. Some of them, they took care of the specimen in the laboratory by giving all the basic requirements, either say water, food, etc, etc. And some of the people, so they have dissected the animal, they have done the 
experiments and finally they got the results so once they have the result the result has to be written in the form of a publishable format okay so as far as this is done and as we know our mother tongue is not english okay so our english is not that good okay our english doesn't match with the english that is required at the international standard okay and as far as this journal is concerned ichthyology and herpetology so it is one of the leading uh herpetology journal published from usa united states of america okay and this journal is more than 100 years old okay and it is very difficult to publish papers in journals which are really old okay and we are fortunate enough that the people have accepted our findings and they have published why because this so because this is the first report of its kind in the whole world okay fine and that's why so we took the help of robert kenneth brown okay so this gentleman he is very good and an excellent scientific writer yes we did write the manuscript okay but so grammatically it has been pruned okay into such a format so which could be published in the journal so that's why so there are so many different authors okay so either coming from bangalore or coming from mysore or coming from tamil nadu okay so albert rajendran he is from tamil nadu okay I say one fellow coming from outside the country that is Robert Kenneth Brown. Okay, and this is what we call as collaborative research. Okay, so now we are in the era of collaboration. Okay, so if you sit idle in one corner, if you think you are doing something great, okay, so then you are the most foolish fellow on this earth. Okay, so now it is we have to open our eyes. Okay, we have to open our ears, and we should be prepared to do what we call as collaborative research okay and when you do the collaborative research so then ultimately we have the best findings okay which is first of its kind in the world next we have what we call as the abstract okay so abstract is this so which is start from here okay so which ends here okay so what exactly this abstract talks about is so this abstract is nothing but a brief gist of the complete article Okay, so whenever you people want to read research article, there is no need to read the article. Sometimes the article runs say for about 30 pages, 25 pages, 10 pages, you may not have time. Okay, and after going through the complete article, finally you may feel that, so this article is of not my relevance. Okay, so to decide whether the article is of your relevance or not, first and foremost thing is, so you have to concentrate or you have to just read only these, one, two, three, four, five hardly five lines are there okay so if you read these five lines then you come to know whether the article is of your interest or not okay i mean to say so whatever the article you are planning to write okay so whether this article has any supplementary information that can supplement or that can guide okay to write your own article or not and if you go down here we see that see this article runs for many pages okay say around say 10 to 12 pages and there is no need to waste your time okay so just concentrate on so the abstract okay so if you read the abstract so then you can decide whether the article is of your interest or not so once it is done yes okay yes the article is of your interest so then comes the next step is what we call as the introduction part okay and this is how we introduce the subject okay what exactly is known okay about the chromosomes in the world with reference to the amphibians okay so that is frogs salamanders etc etc okay so then we ask a question what is lacking at the end of the abstract so once it is done the next step is what we call it as the materials and methods okay so we make use of lots of materials to do the experiments okay and we follow different protocols or methodologies and the materials and method section of the article so it talks about what is the material which has been used from where it has been procured how it has been maintained in the laboratory okay and what are the different protocols so that have been employed so in procuring the data so after doing this uh, experiment okay so probably this is what we got okay so here is what we call as the result section so under the result section so you will be describing so what exactly you got after doing the experiment okay and here the people got so different structures and these structures they have presented in the paper after doing that so next part is what we call as the discussion 
Okay, so as far as the discussion is concerned, okay, we are going to discuss or even when you write the paper, you are going to discuss how exactly the findings, whatever you have done in the last one year, two year, three year, with reference to that title is different from the available information. How your information is new, okay. So if you think your findings is new, so then how you are going to discuss what are its applications. And these portions, we are going to write it under the heading discussion. So that's how. So every article will have a title. It will have list of authors. It will have the abstract. It will have introduction. It will have material methods. It will have results. It will have discussion. Okay, fine. The last portion, which is really very important as far as the article is concerned, is what we call as the acknowledgments. Okay. So as uh, Professor Ramanan sir was telling, okay, so I have went with him many times to cook, okay, to do some field work. I have taken his help. Maybe he comes from a different background. Maybe he's not from science stream, okay. But still, I have taken help from him. And when I write the acknowledgement section, I acknowledge X, Y, Z, okay. So in whose estate we did the field work, who helped us. Probably we scientists, we cannot dig. We are not used to that. We are used to only doing experiments in the laboratory. But the person who is in the field, he is well versed in digging, collecting the specimens, etc., etc. And we take the help of such people, and they are the one so who we have to acknowledge. And to do this research, so we might have taken financial assistance, okay, because we do get grants to do the research. And which are the agencies which have given us the money to do the research, and it is our responsibility and it is research ethics. So to acknowledge such people who have helped us by giving the money to do the research. Right. So next part is, the last part is what we call as the literature cited. Probably you might have seen it as bibliography or say sometimes it is written as references. Okay. So under the references, you are going to list the articles what you have used as a part of writing this research article is tested. Okay, fine. So I'll just scroll down and why I want to, why I have projected this is, okay, so as you see here, it starts from here, okay, so you start counting, how many are there, okay, fine, you can see, okay, when is there, again it's when is there, you just see that slide, fine, okay, fine, so there are say around, 26 references in this paper approximately out of which 13 references has been done by one laboratory in the world okay and because of this expertise okay so the international union for conservation of nature has recognized me as a global sicilian expert okay and my field of uh, research is cytogenetics okay i work in the field of cytogenetics that is the study of chromosomes Okay, so this is how even I started like you, a very humble student. Okay, and today, so I got an opportunity rather than sitting there, I got an opportunity to stand here, okay, and to discuss or to explain what are the things that I have learned in the last 20 years. Okay, 20 years back, if I go back, okay, I used to sit like there, okay, as one of the audience, and I used to listen to the nonsense things. So, what the speaker is trying to lie or saying, right? I hope you got it. I mean to say, I mean what I mean to say is, okay, if you are doing research in physiology, okay, so you cannot go to a person who is doing research in cancer biology, right? Okay, because the person who is doing research in amphibian biology, he will be well versed in amphibians, okay, he will not be well versed with insects. To do, to do research on insects, so be better to, okay, so approach a person who is doing research in the entomology rather than herpetology. So if you ask me the question, okay, why this figure has been put only in this format, right? That is the question, right? Okay. So I am not the deciding authority. The deciding authority is the editor of the journal. So each journal will have an editor. And the editor has given certain guidelines, what we call it as instructions for authors. So before we publish, before we submit an article to any journal, so we have to go through the guidelines. 
that is what we call as instructions to authors each journal will specify the instructions okay so abstract should be only about say 300 words you have to confine your abstract only to 300 words okay and within that 300 word so you should be able to present the whole paper in the form of a gist so here i written literature cited some other journals if you go back and see probably you might have seen the heading references there won't be literature cited but it is the same but each journal will have their own format okay and even for the figure so they'll give a size okay so size should be around say 600 dpi okay so you have to set the image only to 600 dpi if you submit figure which has got 300 dpi immediately the journal people will return that okay please make the figure to 600 dpi and return it okay so those are the guidelines i'll come to you madam just a minute so those are the guidelines which are given by the editorial board of the journal so we have to go through the instruction to authors only then we can submit the article to the journal I hope I have clarified. Right. Yeah, I will come to you. So, what was your question? Could you please, in one sentence? Is this no, no, madam, need not be. Need not be. Okay. So, you please go to. How many of you have seen the Nature Journal? Any of you have seen Nature? Okay. So, if you people have the habit, or if you do, people don't have the habit, please go to Google. Okay, and Google is the most friendly such engine. Anything you want to see. Okay, so now you can write what Aishwarya Rai is doing right now. So it will give the information. Yeah? Yes or no? Okay, you will get all the information. Right? Okay, so similarly, so you go to Nature Journal. So that is the number one journal in the world. Okay, so if you go to any article that is published in the Nature, as Madam asked, hardly there will be say two references, three references. 4, 5 and it will not have list of references like this rocket okay as we have mentioned here okay and it is not compulsory to cite as many references as possible as record as necessary as we feel okay so here priority is given only to those articles from where we have extracted the information okay after extracting the information so we are writing the article in our own words Okay, otherwise plagiarism is there, again the article will be rejected. Right? Yeah. Any other questions? I can proceed? Yes, madam, please. There are to You go to Google, it's very simple. Just go to Google. Okay. See, madam, nowadays there is no need to ask anyone. There is no need to ask anyone. Okay, so even, so I was preparing the PPT while, while I was coming in the bus. Okay, because I traveled, I came from there to Bangalore. Again, I was traveling from Bangalore to here morning. I left around say 6.45. So in the bus, I was making the PPT. Okay, somewhere I got stuck. Okay, what I did was, I just went to YouTube. I tapped how to do this. Okay, immediately I got it and I proceeded with it. Okay, so nowadays all the tools are available. Okay, the one and only thing is you should have patience to sit and search for it. Fine, then that's it. Okay, so now you go to my presentation, sir. So this is not my presentation. So case for you, Tiriela. I don't know if I'm Go back. Yes, sir. Case for your PPT. Okay. So now I will come to the topics, what exactly has been assigned to me. Okay. And these are some of the terminologies, so that I will be talking about now. Okay. Say the impact factor, SNIP, SDR, IPP, site score, okay, H index, G index, HN index, and Altimetrics. Okay. So these are some of the terminologies on which I'll be throwing light. Okay. So one at a time. So now I'll go to the impact factor. Okay. So if you go to dictionary and if you see the meaning of impact, what is the impact? Impact is nothing but influence. Okay, that's why I've written influence is nothing but impact. 
okay and next one is the factor factor may be in terms of number okay that's why i call it as component okay so that is what we call it as the impact factor so when we publish a article in any journal for that matter each journal will have some influence okay or so we also call it as impact factor okay and now i will tell you what exactly we mean by the impact factor so impact factor is usually for the journal okay impact factor is not for the article so as i told you if you open a book you will find many chapters in that okay and if you consider if, if you correlate a book to a journal okay so then each chapter is nothing but each article okay so that whole book will have what we call as the impact factor so similarly the journal will have impact factor but not the article which is published in that journal fine okay please go to the next slide oh sorry fine so as i told you the journal will have impact factor so impact factor is also called as journal impact factor okay so what exactly we mean by the impact factor of a journal so impact factor of a journal is always calculated once in two years for example say say today is july what is today's date 17th right okay fine so there is a journal by name say nature okay we want to know what is the impact factor of the journal nature on july 17 2023 we want to know that okay so how do we calculate so people have given a formula to calculate the impact factor so impact factor of that journal on this day is nothing but how many number of times each article published in that journal has been cited in the last two years i'll repeat it impact factor of a journal i said thing is written there you can also read it okay if i am wrong please correct me so impact factor of a journal is nothing but the number of citations of the articles published in that journal in the last two years so what exactly we mean by citation okay so citation is nothing but any of you have a mobile please only one of you open the mobile fast bigger go to google ah if you want all of you can open no problem okay so open open the mobile just go to google odra sölpa fast ra madbek yakanda ninno mukisbeku sumar ide done google okay in the google you type it as veno v e n u space Govindapa, G O V I N D A P P A. Aitra, ये बंदा, research के ये बंदा, अदर के ये Google Scholar ही दिया, ही दिया. So click on that Google Scholar. Done. Google Scholar click madra. Yera banta udhike. So there is an article. The first article is mitotic abnormalities induced by silk dyeing industry affluence in the cells of Allium sepa. Right. So again is that. So there is a number three zero three. Am I right? Yes. Am I right? Okay. So this is what we call it as citation. Okay. So citation it is nothing but how many number of times your article has been cited. by others okay and that article was cited 303 times right okay so i hope now you got it what do you mean by citation okay so impact factor is nothing but impact factor of a journal is nothing but number of times the research articles published in that journal has been cited in the last 2 years that means to say so july 27th 2021 to 22 july 17th 22 to 23 to date is nothing but the impact factor of the journal i hope you got it 
I'll repeat it. Impact factor of a journal is nothing but the number of times the articles published in that specific journal have received citations in the last two years. And that is what we call as the impact factor. No, no, no. How many times it has been cited? No, 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 no. Downloading is not. So downloading, it comes under altimetrics. So that is the last topic I'll be covering. Okay. So how many times it has been cited? Hmm. Hmm. No, no, madam. Sir, please retain this. Please go back. It is Hagerly. Minimize Madi. Agla open Madi. La open Madi. B chromosomes. Can you guess what is this? What is this animal? Any of you can guess? This is a centipede. Looks like a centipede. Okay. And this is the animal on which I work. Okay. So this is a necklace amphibian. So it is not a snake, it's a it's like a frog, but looks like a snake. Bikram is open body, sir. Open mud hagi it could be close mud. The first one. Okay. Published with the second one, Bogi. Sorry. Ah. Open money. Yes, scroll down. Full Kune Gogi literature cited part Gogi. Bogi, Bogi. Yes, sir. Stop it somewhere here. Sat Sat Kale, 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 Kale. So, go zoom it. You know. You know, okay, fine. So the left hand drag money. Fine. Okay. See here, there are a lot of references. Okay. So this is what we call it as citing. So that article, for example, say article has been published by some person A. Okay, so that article you are citing here, for example, say, so somewhere here or here, here, any, so many names are there, okay. So you are using their information and you are citing that paper in your paper. When we cite, that is what we call the citation, okay, fine. So why do we cite? Because we have extracted the information from that article because whatever the information that is present in that article, it is relevant for writing your article. So that means to say, yeah, it's there. Google Scholar is there. Okay, so there is one more. I'm going to talk about ResearchGate is there. Okay, so these are some of the. So one such is the Google Scholar, the other one is Opus, so there is what we call as Web of Science, okay. So there is SCI, Science Citation Index, there is ResearchGate, okay. So these are all some of the international bodies, so which keep a track of all these things every second, okay. Yes. Otherwise it won't count. Done? Fine. Anything else? Fine, sir. Please go back to the presentation. <coughs> presentation. Okay, so, as it reads, so journal impact factor, also what we call it as the impact factor, is an academic journal, is a Scientometric index calculated by so this is the agency okay so that is clary weight so that reflects the yearly mean number of citations of articles published in the last two years in a given journal as indexed by web of science okay so this is what we call as the impact factor okay so most of the time so what the scientist does is okay so they want to publish always articles in journals which has got highest impact factor 
Okay, for example, say I have cited an example in the next slide. Okay, so yeah, please go to the next slide, sir. Okay, so the impact factor is a value that determines the ranking and status of an academic journal. Okay, how good is an academic journal? It is decided by the impact factor of that journal. Okay, so journals that boast high impact factor values appear as well managed and prestigious publications. So that's why people are always behind so publishing their research findings in journals with highest impact factor. Okay, because so when you publish the articles in journals with highest impact factor, that means to say you are a good researcher. That is how the research is valued. Okay, at the global level. Next slide. Okay, so this is the brief history of the impact factor. Okay, let's not worry about this. So if you want, I can give this presentation to you people. You can take it and you can read it. Okay, so this is how it started way back in so many years back. Okay, so then there is revolution, then there is evolution. So finally, so we are left with the Clarivate. So that is the agency which maintains the impact factor of the journals, of all the journals at the global level. Next. So this is how we calculate the impact factor. Okay, so as I said, so impact factor is calculated by taking the citations of the articles published in that journal in the last two years divided by the total number of publications in that journal. That is what we call as the impact factor of the journal. Fine? Okay, next. Okay, so here I have given an example, okay, how to calculate the impact factor. So what they have done here is, for example, say impact factor in 2017. Okay, so how to calculate the impact factor of the general nature in 2017. It is nothing but how many number of times the articles published in the general nature in the last two years, that is 15 to 16, 16 to 17 have been cited divided by how many articles have been published in the journal Nature in the last two years? So that talks about what we call as the impact factor of that journal. Yes, okay, thanks. Okay, so next one is, so is it done, impact factor, any doubts? Okay, so I hope now we have understood that impact factor is nothing but the influence of that journal as far as the publications of the articles at the international level is concerned. Right, okay. How many times the articles have been cited in the last two years divided by how many articles have been published in that journal. So that talks about the impact factor. Right. So next we have what we call as good. Okay, fine. Source normalized impact per publication. Okay. So till now, whatever we spoke, it is for the journal. Okay, impact factor, it is always for the journal, not for the article. Okay, and each journal, each volume of a journal will have so many articles. Okay, and the impact factor is for the complete journal, it is not for the article. But here is a metric system, so by which we can measure the impact per publication. So each journal may have many publications, 10 publications, 15 publications, sometimes 50 publications, okay. And what is the impact of each article that is published in that journal is what we call as the source normalized impact per publication. And it is calculated as the number of citations given in the present year to publications in the past three years divided by the total number of publications in the past three years. So here, rather than taking two years into account, so here the people take three years into account. Okay, so this is how the evolution has taken place. As of today, so we don't rely upon all these things, SNIP, ESGR, IPP, etc., etc. We always rely only on the impact factor, that is the IEF. Okay, yes sir, next. <coughs> okay, so fine. So where do we find these SNIP scores? So these are available from the two databases. Okay, so one is the Scopus and the other one is the CWC. Yes. Okay. So now I'll try to highlight what exactly we mean by the term Scopus. Yes. Sir. Next. Okay. So Scopus, an abstract and indexing database. 
Okay, so this is what we call as a database. So where the information is available. Okay, so what sort of information is available? So information is available about the topic, about the article, about the number of citations it has received, about the different authors, about the journal, about the volume, page number, year of publication. All these details are available in the database. Okay, so database is nothing but a site where the complete information so which has been maintained electronically, it is available. And one such globally used database is what we call as the Scopus. Okay. So for your kind of information, Scopus is a database. Okay. And most of the time, so the Scopus maintains data information pertaining to the field of science and also sometimes the social sciences. Okay. So if you ask me a question, so why the name is Scopus? Okay, the name Scopus was inspired by the bird. Okay, so here the Scopus refers to name of a bird, and this bird has excellent navigation skills. Okay, so that's why so they have called this database as Scopus. Okay, in the next figure, next slide you have the figure of the bird. Okay, so this is the bird. Okay, so that database has been named after so this Scopus Umbrella, so which is a bird which has got highest or a very good navigation skills. Right. Next. Okay. So we have one more metric system. So what we call it as the Simago Journal Rank. Okay. So again here, so this refers to the rank of that particular journal at the global level. In the previous case, we have seen impact factor refers to the journal. So next we have seen, okay, so that is uh, for the article. So next we have one more metric system, what we call test, the Simago Journal Rank, okay. And it is a measure of the prestige of scholarly journals, okay. Again, it is for the journal as it says. So SDR scores are computed using network analysis of citations received by journals. So as we discussed earlier, so each journal will have many articles and these many articles receive different citations and how many number of uh, times an article has been cited and that information is collected as far as creating what we call as the Simago Journal Rank. So the prestige value depends on the field, quality and reputation of the source journals that citing article is published in. So sometimes there are certain fields, for example, say if you go back to the herpetology, whatever I spoke, okay. So if you go to Google and if you search for how many people are working on the cytogenetics of Sicilians in the world, okay. So you don't find many people who are working in that. So if you go back to 1991 to date, approximately say how many years is it now? 1991 to 2023, how many? 30? 32 years. In the last 32 years, okay, if you go to Google and search, so you will find only three articles. Only three articles which has been published other than the lab from Bangalore University. Okay, so that means to say, so only that particular lab has done extensive work in that field. And that's why, so when we scroll down in that article, we find many articles, okay, so wherein the names of these authors are there, Ventachalaya, etc, 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 etc. So that's why, so whenever you people work in a very unique field, so under such circumstances, you find least number of citations. Why? Because it's, so there are no competitors across the globe. There are no people who are working in that field, so other than your lab. Okay, at such circumstance, you may suffer from the number of citations, but you should never worry because you become the unique person in the globe who is specialist in that group. Okay, and that's why, so as I told you, so based on, so though, so that is the only lab, okay, which is working on Sicilians, but still the highest body in the world, what we call it as the International Union for Conservation of Nature, so it has recognized that person as a global expert. Okay, so that's how you become an expert. When you become unique or when you work in a unique field, but when it comes to your impact, I mean to say, the number of citations, whatever you have done, okay, it may be least. Okay, so the mobile is on till now. Is it, is it on? 
Fine? Okay. So please switch it on. Just go back to that, whatever you saw earlier. So in the first article you saw that the number of citations were how many? 303. Right? Okay. You just scroll down. So go to an article, a new species of ichthyophage from uh, Karnataka, something like that. What is it? Karnataka, India. Karnataka, India. Okay. So you just see how many citations it has seen? 25. Got it? Okay. So the first article which talks about, which is common. Okay, so where many people are working across the globe. Okay, so that article has been how many times it has been used? It has been used 303 times. But, so when you do something really new to the new to the science, and it is a new species. So describing a new species is lifetime achievement of a scientist. Okay, and when you do something really new, which is new to science, but it has not seen 300 citations, hardly it has seen how many citations? 25 citations, but, but, so that is new to science and that will be there forever. If you go to Google and if you search Ectiophase Codoguensis, you don't find anybody's name. Only you will find four people name. So one is Dr. Mark Wilkinson, okay. The second one is Dr. David Gover. The num third number is Govinda Paveno. And the fourth one is Govinda Yaventachalaya. Okay. So these are the four people who discovered a new species. Even after describing a new species, okay, but it has not been used many a times. It has not been cited many a times. Why? Because is there are limited people across the globe who are working in that field. But that species name, even if you type after 1000 years, like that. So the authors remains the same. Okay, and that is what we got as virtual contribution to research. Right? Okay. And sometimes your virtual contributions may not be cited as many number of times. But you should never be worried. Okay. I hope you got it now. So sometimes you find article published by you, highest number of citations. Sometimes article published by the same person in a different field will have very few citations. I hope I have, you have seen both the contrasting things. So one having 303 and the other one having hardly say less than 30, right? Yeah, I'll stop it uh, for a while. Any questions? Anybody? Yes, yes, no. <coughs> most of the time, most of the time. So why because is, so there are very few people, very few people who are working in that field, right? Okay. Nobel Prize is uh, distributing, so on what basis they are distributing? Is there any citation basis or is uh, they are contributing to social and uh, economic process in a country or else in the world like that? Yeah, what is the answer? What is the answer you have? What is you? the criteria to get the Nobel Prize? I got the question, madam. Yes. So, what is the answer you have with you? Uh, what I read in the newspaper is uh, the contribution to the society, mm -hmm. uh, according to that, they are giving a uh, Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. And that, is that true or is, uh, that's, that's Okay, fine. I'll ask you a question before I answer your question. Okay. So Nelson Mandela is a scientist? No, that is from peace. Just, just a minute. Is he a researcher? No, he is not. No. But still he is given Nobel Prize? Yeah, that is for social work. Okay, fine. Peace, yeah. yeah. Mm. And other than that, uh, they are giving uh, in a science fair, they are not mm. also giving Nobel Prize. Mm. Uh, and also economics, that is on 1969 onwards. Like that. What is the criteria? Mm. So the criteria is anything that you have done, it has got global impact. Okay. That means to say, is it really helpful to the society or not? Right? Okay. So based on that, the application side of that, for example, say if you go back, okay, so now it is 2023, if you go back to 2019 or 20, okay. So there was a Nobel Prize for what we call as the CRISPR-Cas9. I hope the science people are aware of this. CRISPR-Cas9, at least we have read this. If you are not, please go back to Google and see. Okay, so what exactly we mean by CRISPR-Cas9? Okay, so this is one such gene editing technology. So wherein, so depending upon your requirement, you can edit the gene. 
you can introduce some change into the gene and you can make the gene to express the way you wish. Okay. And this experiment has been done by okay, some people in US. Okay. And it has got wide applications across the globe. Okay. And that's why such people have been given Nobel Prize. Okay. And and if you see uh, I, I think I'm, I'm diverting a lot. Okay. So if you people are really interested, you go to Google. Okay. See for Nobel lecture. Nobel lecture. Okay. So this is a site where you can listen to the lectures by the Nobel laureates. Okay. Fine. Obama is a Nobel laureate. Okay. Mandela is a Nobel laureate. Okay. So so many people are there across the globe. Fine. See. And when they give the Nobel lecture, most of the people they have said that I failed in chemistry in undergraduate program, but today I am very happy that here to receive the Nobel Prize. Okay. Many of the Nobel laureates they have failed as a student, but they got the highest award in the world. Okay. So what is it we have to learn from these people is so failure is not permanent. Failure, failure is only temporary. Okay, and when you fail, so you make an attempt to pass. When you pass, you will make another attempt to pass, 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 and once you are there at the top. Okay, so this is how. So as a student, many of us, including me, I also consider myself as a student, not as a teacher. Okay, I have failed many times. I will tell you a brief story if you are really interested. Okay, say so today, as I told you. The IUCN, the highest body in the world, International Union for Conservation of Nature, has recognized me as an expert. You know why? No, no, you know why? If, if I go back to two decades, okay, and see, it happened like this, okay, and this is true, 100% true, okay. It happened like this, I was sitting like you, the way you are sitting today, okay. And some other person was delivering a talk. He was delivering a talk on the legless amphibian, that is a Sicilian. So then, so those days I am talking about 2001. So there was no mobile, there was no female, female was there, email was not there. Right? Okay, fine. So no email. So I took his address. I wrote a letter to him. Then I went to his place. I asked him, sir, I want to see the animal, please show me. You know what he said? Can you imagine? Can you imagine what he said? He told me to get out. Okay. He told me to get out. He didn't show me the animal. I requested him many a times, sir, please show me the animal. I'll just do like this once and I'll go. He didn't show the animal at all. Okay. So I took it as a challenge. And that is the impact what you see in the Google Scholar. What I did was, after six years later, I discovered a new species. Okay. See, I was prevented even from seeing that animal. I never knew what is that animal. Okay. But I took it as a challenge in 2007. Okay. And the collaborators are, okay, who are the collaborators? Number one, Sicilian biologist in the world, Dr. Mark Wilkinson and Dr. David Gover from Natural History Museum, London. Okay. I collaborated with them and we discovered a new species. A boy who was told to get out. Okay. He rose to such an extent where he today he is recognized globally. Okay. So what I what I am trying to tell you is, okay, so if somebody says get out, get lost, say thanks to them. Okay. Go back and do the homework. Okay. And do one fine day you will be like me. Okay. And today I am very happy. Okay. So last week I received one more uh, what is that? Uh, invitation from the ZEC uh, Science Foundation. Okay, so ZEC Science Foundation has invited me to serve as a, re a reviewer for a global project. Okay, and recently, three months back, there was Amphibian Genomics Consortium. Okay, and the Amphibian Genomics Consortium has invited Dr. Verno to be an expert on the panel. Why? Okay, why? Because is I took it as a challenge. Okay, I proved, yes, I am capable. I have done it. Okay, so like that, each one of us, we have our own inherent, inherited capacity. Okay, but we have to bring it out. Okay, so to bring it out, what we have to do is, we have to face many failures. 
99 times we fail. You know why? Because we want to pass only once. And that is the 100th. Okay. And those who have patience, only they can survive. Those who can do, ready to prepare, to do hard work, only they can survive now. Okay. So now the era is challenging. Okay. The era is really competitive and highly challenging. Okay. Those who have patience and those who have perseverance, only they can succeed. Fine. Yeah, so I hope I have gone somewhere else. Sorry. <coughs> yes, sir. You can skip this slide. Yeah. <coughs> so again, here we have impact per publication. Okay. So what is the impact of your article has as far as the international scenario is concerned? We are seeing with reference to the journal. So here it is with reference to uh, the impact per publication okay and this is also called as raw impact per publication and IPP is a number of current year citations to papers from the previous three years divided by the total number of papers in those three previous years so how many number of times your article has been cited in the last three years divided by the total number of publications in that Journal. Okay, in the last three years is what we call it as the impact per publication as far as your publication in that specific journal is concerned. Okay, so this is a matrix as far as measuring the impact of a research article published in a specific journal by any one of you. Right, next. Okay, fine. So here is the site's code. Okay, so as you saw earlier in the Google Scholar, okay. So you are saying what exactly we mean by how many times your research has been cited. If it has been cited, say around 100 times, your site score is 100. Okay. For example, say say you have 10 publications to your credit. Okay. So each article has been cited, say, 10 times. Okay. That means to say 10 into 10 is equal to 100. Okay. Your site score is 100. On the other hand, say you have only two articles you have published in your lifetime. Say one article has been cited 1000 times, the second article has been cited 2000 times. Let us assume. So that means to say your site score is 3000. Okay. That means to say how many number of times your articles has been cited that talks about the site score. Okay. So here the site score, it is most of the time, it is per, per the person or for the article published by that specific person. Next, sir. Okay, fine. Yeah, I'll stop it again. If you have any questions, please. Yes, sir, please. If there is any humility uh, practices on the journal. Or any? For the whole episode. Whole episode. All and so publication. If there is any cumulative uh, matrices, cumulative matrices. Yes. See, actually, what happens is, for example, say you have a you have say ten uh, publications, right? Yes. Okay. So each publication has been done in a separate journal. Say journal A, journal B, journal C, journal D, E, etc., etc., etc. Fine. So all those data will be available only at your specific database. If you are a Google Scholar member, member, the information is available. If you are a research gate member, okay, so then it is available. So why? Because is you have done the publications in different journals. Say one in Japanese journal, one in Pakistan journal, one in Chinese journal, one in American journal, etc., etc. Okay. So under such, such circumstance, only the person who is involved, so he will have the score with him rather than because it's cumulative because it has to be done okay by one agency and we don't have such agency which put all the information together but it is very much available as far as your google scholar or your research gate is concerned right thank you yes. yes. the next any other questions anybody what is it site score okay it is by the channel. Yeah. See, all of you what you do is, 
you try to become try to become it, it can be done in few seconds okay become a google scholar member okay you have to just okay sign in okay how do it takes few seconds or few minutes that's it i think nowadays might be it must be very easy okay i became a member somewhere around 10 15 years ago is it done okay so now again you go back to that google pass okay google scholar fine so you just scroll down google scholar you stop till you get the number of citations 9 okay 303 is there next there is something like 35 next there is something like 25 something like that you just go down you stop at 9 yes okay so that is what we call as the h index okay i'll come to what exactly we mean by h index if you go up if you go up okay so there you find citations 499 h index is 9 am i right yes okay so can anybody tell me what exactly we mean by h index now yeah the answer is there in the screen hmm Yes, yes, sir. You're right. Publication is equal to citation. No. So, what what is that you understood by the term H index? Yeah, it, the answer is there. It's there on the screen as well as in uh, your uh, mobile screen. Okay. See here, H index is nothing but the maximum number of times all the articles published by a researcher has been cited i'll repeat it the maximum number of times all the articles published by a researcher is cited how many number of times it is cited 9 okay first article is also published 9 times second article is also published 9 times third is 9 fourth is 9 fifth is 9 something like that okay and maximum number of times all the articles published by a researcher okay in that case it is 9 so that's why the h index is 9 right okay so as it says so it's an author level metric that measures both the productivity and citation impact of the publications and initially used for individual scientist or scholar sir can you please repeat I'll repeat it. H index. If that definition is there in the slide also, okay. I'll repeat it. It's very simple. H index. For example, say, say you have four publications. A, B, C, D. Read it as you. Say A has been cited two thousand times. Say B has been cited hundred times. Say C has been cited eight times. Okay. Say D has been cited two times. So then your H index is eight. No, not the average, madam. Average is how much? Average is one thousand hundred eighty two. Average is what? Almost say thousand one ten. Thousand one ten divided by two is how much? Five zero five. If I am not wrong. Okay, it's not the average. I'll repeat it. Say you have four publications. Article A has been cited cited thousand times. Say article B has been cited hundred times. Article C has been cited eight times. article d has been cited twice two times okay and then your h index is 8 h index is nothing but maximum number of times the articles published by a researcher has been cited what is the maximum number 4 8 8 8 is the maximum number because this also has seen 8 this also has seen 8 because 100 is greater than 8 and again 8 Whereas two is lesser than eight, and you don't take two as a h index. You take eight as a h index. I'll repeat it. H index is nothing but maximum number of times all the articles published by a researcher has been cited. Is it done? Okay, and that is what we call as the h index. Okay, so here H it stands for name of a person. Okay, and the name of the person we'll see in the next slide. Yes, sir. Next. 
Okay, fine. Next. Yes, sir. Next, next. Time, Michael. Yeah. Next, next slide. Okay. Next slide. I'll just go to I. Okay. Sareska. Five. I tell. Next slide, sir. Next. Yes. Fine. Okay. So if you go back to that Google Scholar, if you find I I ten. Okay. So here I ten index. It is nothing but number of times. Number of times. All your article has seen ten citations, or number of articles which has seen which has seen ten citations. If we have ten articles, say all the ten articles has been cited more than ten times, so then your I ten index is nothing but ten. I'll repeat it. Okay, I ten is nothing but articles which has seen citations. Ten and above. How many articles it has seen? For example, say again, I'll go back to this. Okay, first article, thousand citations. Second article, hundred citations. Third article, ten citations. Fourth article, say five citations. So then your I ten index is three because these are the three articles which has seen citations ten and above. First has seen thousand, which is above ten. Second has seen hundred again, which is about ten. The third one is ten. So that's why your I ten index is three, right? Okay. At this one, it has seen only two citations, and two is less than ten. So that's why we don't take this into account. So your I ten is three. Okay. I ten is nothing but okay. How many articles published by a researcher has seen ten and above number of citations? And in this case, it has seen three. Next. Okay, fine. So again, here is a research grade score. Okay. So even you people can become research grade member. Okay. And once you become research grade member, so then you will find all these details. Okay. So you have to upload. Okay. Or sometimes it is automatically done by the agency. Okay. Most of the time they don't do it. Okay. We may have to do it manually. Okay. Because you have the published article, so you have the journal name, you have the year, you have the volume, you have the page number, you have the authors, you have the title, all this. Also, you have the abstract. Okay, and all these things you have to upload there. And once you upload, so the database will take it, okay, on its own, and it will be reflected throughout the journal. Right. Next. Okay, fine. <coughs> so we have seen all these things. So many things. Okay, so what we are seeing till now is how to look for a problem. Once you have the problem, how to conduct the experiment. After doing the experiment, what are the results that you get? After getting the results, okay, you are going to write an article. Okay, so after writing the article, the article getting published. Okay, and once it is published, if the article is used by somebody else, okay, so as we saw the citation, your article may be cited. Suppose you don't look for a problem, you don't solve the problem, you don't publish your findings, and suppose say if an article is not cited, okay, so that still there is a method, okay, so by which your input into science will be taken into account, and that is what we call as the alternative matrix, also called as the alt matrix, okay. So what is that we do sometimes is for example, say a person coming from the arts background, okay, he wants to know about crocodile, okay, so then he goes to Google, okay, so type crocodile, then he look for images, okay, he look for different varieties, okay, he look for where exactly they live, how many are there in Africa, how many are there in America, how many are there in Bangalore, how many are there in Mysore, etc., etc., okay, so these things are not cited anywhere. Okay, but your interest in that field, it will be taken into account and based on that, a score will be given and that is what we call as the alternative matrix. Okay, so here you need not have to publish your article, okay, but based on the number of times you search for, okay, and that search, it is taken by the engine, okay, and accordingly, number of times you have searched on the Google, 
So you will be given a score and that is what we call as the alt matrix score or it is also called as the alternative matrix. Okay. So because sometimes I may be very curious to know about Mandela. Okay, because Mandela is not from science background. Okay, but I want to know. I want to know how many wives he has. Okay, how many kids he has. From which country he is. So what he what did he do? Okay, why he got Nobel Prize, etc., etc., etc. So all these things I search. Okay, and accordingly, if I'm a member, so I'll be given a score, and that score is what we call as the alternative matrix score. Okay. Yes, sir. Go to the next slide. I hope it is. Thank you. Okay, so I hope I am uh, on time. Yeah. Right. So I'll give you a few more uh, uh, seconds if you don't mind. If you have any more questions, please, before I wind up. Yes, sir. 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 Yes